Well, let's do Synecdoche. Um, is this with Philip Seymour Hoffman? It is. And um, it's almost a year ago now that I saw the film, almost exactly a year ago, because it played at Cannes. And it's uh, written and directed by Charlie Kaufman. As you probably know, Charlie Kaufman is a great screenwriter. He's written things like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which he worked with Michel Gondry, which for, for my money was the best film of that year. And it was a really peculiar thing in which... After doing that, Gondry kind of went out on his own and made some movies on his own. And I interviewed him a couple of times for The Culture Show. And I remember Gondry saying that he felt that his work was better when it was done on his own because it was pure undiluted him. And uh, that obviously if you work with anybody else, if it was a collaboration, what you did was you took down the purity of the original vision. It turns into something else. So actually what he wanted to do is do everything himself. Of course, the end result was that the films that he made on his own without the sort of the mediating influence of, of Charlie Kaufman tended to be more impenetrable. Now, again, it wasn't that there wasn't anything anything interesting them in, in them, because there was, but it just wasn't anything like as accessible as what happened uh, in Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which, of course, is an incredibly complicated story. I mean, Eternal Sunshine is very... It's like total recall done again and again and again. It's like a Hall of Mirrors story. It's about identity. It's about the breakdown of identity, about past, present and future all coexisting, about having to forget things that you can't forget. It's a very complicated film. It's very accessible. Now... The same thing has now happened with Charlie Kaufman, who did, I mean, being John Malkovich, I think is probably the thing he's, you know, he, he's best known for outside of Eternal Sunshine. But I mean, in the case of Synecdoche, he's made the movie himself, and he's directed it himself. So he's not, you haven't got that tension between the two creative uh, people behind it. And I think that the lack of tension is a problem. Now, in the case of Synecdoche, to give it a brief plot synopsis. Can you just explain the title? No, well, well done, straight to the heart of the periphery, and you're absolutely right. Okay. When we, went, like to when we went into the screening in Cannes, the whole question was, what's the, what does the title mean? How do you pronounce it? What does it mean? When we came out of the screening, the question was, what day of the week is it? And do we care any longer how you pronounce the title? There are two words. There's, there's Schenectady, the place in New York, and there's the other word, which looks like it should be pronounced cynic doc, which apparently, and correct me, I, I know we have several Oxbridge uh, English professors listening every moment, is apparently a word which means a, something which stands in for the a part which stands in for the whole. The example Along, being alongside the whole, or just instead of. No, the whole. no. So if you say outside for, of the whole, if you if you if you refer to an army, you know, it's like you know, a hundred foot of, or, or, or um, no, what was the, the somebody oh, like a head head of cattle, you know, or or, or, or what. Y- it's, it's a small part of something that stands in for the whole of something. Can I have your daughter's hand in marriage? It doesn't mean, can you no. literally give me the bit with the four fingers and the thumb? Right. It means, you know what, if I'm having that, I might as well keep the rest of it. If her. you can explain that in a slightly more succinct way, let's say in under a paragraph, uh, mayo at bbc.co.uk. I think it, hand of marriage was actually rather well done. Well, we got there in the end. OK, so impenetrable and, I have to say, annoying title. In the, you know, how do you do... Blah, blah, blah. So... The story is Philip Seymour Hoffman is a failing artist who very clearly standing in for Charlie Kaufman, having a midlife crisis, hasn't done the stuff he needs to do. You know, you interview Charlie Kaufman, you ask him about this. He said, obviously, most of what he does has a biograph- an autobiographical element because people in the end end up writing about themselves. Even if you write about going to the moon, you end up writing about your own perception of going to the moon. So he's a failed artist. He gets given a grant, a genius grant, to put on a large work of art which is dedicated only to being truthful. And what he then does is he mounts a theatrical production which grows in scale until it takes over an entire apartment in which people are practising a version of his life that effectively becomes so big that it takes over his life and where reality ends and fiction begins kind of collapses and everything becomes a play and it's all a bit Pirandello and, you know, we're all just... there's a clip that's going to explain it. No, there's no clip. There's no clip. I'm doing... No, and believe me, the clip wouldn't explain it any more than that, Okay, So, you know that thing that Shakespeare says, all the world's a stage? Well, that's it, fine. That's it. That that should have been the tagline. All, All the world's a stage, in this case, a very, very big warehouse. Now, the problem is this. It's not that Kaufman doesn't have some quite wonderful uh insights and some incredibly inventive uh turns of the imagination it's not that philip seymour hoffman isn't always worth watching on screen as is samantha morton and many other members of the cast it's not that there aren't some genuinely breathtaking moments such as the moment with the dreamlike moment in which he suddenly believes that his daughter has disappeared off to another country and been tattooed and the woman he's living with says everyone's tattooed and suddenly demonstrates that she's tattooed from head to foot and he just hadn't noticed up until that point it's not that none of those things are there it's that you just don't care because watching it is like wading through you know prac crit porridge 
It is a film that absolutely required somebody to mediate Charlie Kaufman so that it's not just like being inside his head. It's like climbing. It's like doing a being John Malkovich on Charlie Kaufman. It's like, in fact, a movie called Being Charlie Kaufman, in which you get into his brain and you're scrambled around for two and a bit hours. And unfortunately, what could, had it had another person in there saying, you can't do that, you can't do that, straighten that out, Roger Corman with a chainsaw, you need a helicopter there, you need a chase sequence here, and believe me, you can't go... It descends so much into self-indulgence that the things that are good about it just get lost in the exhaustion of the film. And I say this with no great, um, you know, pleasure because there are things in Synecdoche, uh, New York, that I do think are really good. I really like Charlie Kaufman. I think in a, at a time in which people are writing terribly formulaic Hollywood scripts, it's great to see somebody essentially, you know, writing existential parables and doing so in a way which is witty and clever and inventive. And I, it also looks like a, a project of great love and a project which if you went into it wanting to find a masterpiece in it, you might be able to do so. But I've seen it twice. The first time I completely lost patience with it and I really, really got fed up with it. The second time I thought, you know, what this needs is a fearsome editor. What this needs is a script doctor. What this needs is a producer with a big stick saying, that's very nice, Mr. Kaufman. Now cut it in half and come back when you've taken out half the lines and it's half the length. Because all the good stuff gets lost in the waffle as has so often been said, about, I, I invite uh, people to finish this self-deprecating gag. In what kind of porridge? Very... What do you mean, what kind what of porridge? What kind of porridge? Pratt-crit porridge. Yeah, what's that? You know what practical criticism is? I do. Yeah. What's that got to do with porridge? Well, it was a mixed metaphor. Oh, right. It was the porridge of practical criticism. What's wrong with that? Actually, I'm very proud of that phrase. I'm going to use it again. Um, uh, porridge with toppings or not? No. P Pratt crit porridge. Pratt crit being you get shown something completely, you don't know what it is, and you have to t say whether it's good or bad. Porridge, as in stodgy, as in wading through porridge. You, excuse porridge me. can be light and fluffy, though. You want very tasteful. Name for me a light, fluffy, and tasteful porridge. And you're not allowed to say ready break. It's not porridge. The porridge that I have every morning. Oh, what, what's that then? It's light and Angel fluffy. delight porridge. That's no. not. Can I just say, Simon? Angel that's delight. not porridge. That's just your wife being nice to you because you have, you know a children's dessert for breakfast and she is tells that you it that it's part you're the person who's drinking ribena and eating hip organic what's wrong have... with ribena oh don't, don't start, start. <laughs> so i have butterscotch whip for breakfast you do yes right. uh tim in leicester synoptiki synecdoche noun a figure of speech in which a part of something is used to refer to or denote the whole thing yes it's what i said or the whole to refer to or denote a part, e.g. the use of wiser heads to mean wiser people. OK, let me ask you. When yeah, I was it, but in a sent, it, you know, what I mean, in a sentence rather than a paragraph. No, OK, we, we were trying to explain what this word synecdoche meant. And I right. said it's like it's when the part denotes the whole. Like, for example, if you ask for somebody's hand in marriage, you're not asking for their hand, you're asking for all of them, but you're referring to their mm -hmm. hand. Did that make sense? Yeah, figure Thank you speech. very much. Thank you. Yeah, but you took Thank about five hours to get there. That's all. And brought porridge into it. Joe Van Giesen, lost somewhere in Georgia. I'm from New York, therefore I know the pronunciation of the town. Uh, Schenectady. Yes, but, it's, but the film isn't called Schenectady. The film is called Cynic Doc, pronounced Synecdoche to rhyme with Schenectady. That's the whole point. And as I said, you know this phrase, there's, it, there is allegedly a phrase which doctors use on their notepads, which is, you know, DFK, DFC. I've got a feeling I shouldn't ask. Don't know and don't care. And it was that literally coming out of the film... That's what you thought. That's what you thought.